Imagine, if you will, the vastness of Russia's Ural Mountains on a biting February night. The moonlit casts a muted glow over the snow-blanketed slopes, revealing an environment both eerily serene and unsettingly silent. But within this tranquility hides an enigma, a shadow of something inexplicably sinister. It was here, amidst the frosted peaks, that a series of events unfolded. Events so harrowing, so mystifying, that they would come to haunt the annals of mountaineering history. But for now, let's tread lightly on this path of discovery. As we ascend into this tale, be prepared to grapple with more questions than answers. The Dianlov path beckons, and its story, chilling to the bone, awaits. In the late January of 1959, a vibrant and ambitious group of nine young Soviet hikers set forth on what was meant to be an exhilarating winter expedition. Among them were seasoned trek enthusiasts, university students and engineers, all connected by a shared passion for the great outdoors. Led by the tenacious Igor Dyatlov, after whom the pass would later be eponymously named, the group comprised of eight men and two women. They hailed from the Ural Polytechnic Institute, with dreams as vast as the landscapes they sought to traverse. Their mission? To scale the northern Ural peaks, specifically a mountain named Otorten. It was a challenging journey, even for the experienced trekkers, but they embarked with high spirits and optimism, their faces aglow with excitement and anticipation. Little did they know, that this journey would etch their names into history. Not for the expected tales of adventure, but for a mystery that would baffle the world for decades. Days turned into weeks. The fervour of their departure was now overshadowed by an eerie silence. The group had promised to send a telegram to their sports club once they safely returned. But that telegram never came. Concerned families, their worries amplifying by the day, began to voice their anxiety. By February 20th, with still no word from Dyatlov's group, a search and rescue mission was mounted. Comprised of volunteers and fellow students, these initial efforts were soon supplemented by military and local law enforcement. On February 26th, a discovery sent shivers down their spines. On the eastern slope of Koyat Shaakal, better known as the Dead Mountain, they stumbled upon the hiker's tent. But it wasn't the tranquil campsite they might have hoped to find. The tent was severely damaged, cut open from the inside. Inside, they found an array of personal belongings, warm clothes, shoes, cameras. It was as if the trekkers had fled in a hurry. What could terrify them so much that they'd rush into the freezing cold, barely dressed? The gravity of the situation began to dawn on the search party. This wasn't just a case of hikers losing their way. Something profoundly disturbing had transpired on that icy slope and thus began a journey into the heart of one of the 20th century's most baffling unsolved mysteries. The Ural Mountains have seen countless sunrises and sunsets, witnessed the ebb and flow of seasons, but on those cold February days, the mountains hit a story. A story etched in snow, eeriness and mystery. Just a short distance from the tent, two bodies were discovered beneath a tall cedar. Yuri Krivonashenko and Yuri Doroshenko lay there, barefooted 
and dressed only in their underwear. The surrounding trees showed signs of damage, as if someone had tried to climb them, perhaps in a desperate bid for a vantage point or to escape something or someone. Following a trail of footprints barely visible in the snow, three more bodies were found. Igor Dyatlov, Zenaida Kolomogrova, and Rustim Slobodin were located at different distances from the tent. It appeared as if they were trying to return to camp, their final poses suggesting a desperate attempt to combat the sub-zero temperatures. It would be two long months with the thawing of the snow before the remaining four trekkers were located, but their discovery only deepened the mystery. And they were better dressed than the others, suggesting they might have ventured out later or taken the clothes from their deceased friends. Some even wore handmade shoes made of wrapped up clothes. But the true enigma lay in their injuries. Nicholas Thibo Brignolel had a major skull injury. Ludmila Dubanina and Simeon Zolotaryov had multiple ribs fractures, and Dubanina's tongue was strangely missing. What perplexed the investigators was the nature of these injuries. They weren't caused by force or blunt trauma. The pressure exerted was comparable to that of a car crash. Adding to the enigma, their clothes held traces of radioactivity. No external wounds, no signs of a struggle, just internal horrors. Why did they abandon their tent? Why did they not use their shoes? What could inflict such injuries without leaving a mark? The mountain, it seemed, jealously guarded its secrets. In the echoing halls of Soviet bureaucracy, a hushed investigation into the Dyantlov tragedy began. The Russian winter wasn't kind, yet this was a group of experienced trekkers. So what had driven them to such an end? The state was determined to find an answer. Or at least, an explanation. Investigators dove deep, retracing the steps of the group, analysing every scrap of evidence. But every clue seemed to further convolute the puzzle. For example... There were no external injuries on most of the bodies. And yet, some had severe internal traumas. A force likened to a car crash. But not a single footprint or sign of any other being near the group. And then, there were the traces of radioactivity on their clothes. A detail hard to dismiss. Even harder to explain. And to top it off, another group of hikers, camped some 50 kilometres away, reported seeing strange orange orbs in the night sky. Amid the mounting pressures and ever-hungry rumour mill, the Soviet officials, perhaps too swiftly, drew their conclusions. Their official statement? The group had died due to a compelling natural force. A broad, vague, unsatisfying term. What force? How? Questions multiplied, but answers. They were few and far between. It's worth noting that the files of the Dyatlov Pass incident were sent to a secret archive. Access to them remained restricted. To many, it felt like a chapter hastily closed, a story brushed under the rug, its loose ends dangling, begging for clarity. The dissatisfaction was palpable. If anything, 
the official report only fueled more theories and wild speculations. The Dyatlov Pass incident, rather than finding a conclusion, had found itself enshrined in the annals of mysteries without end. In the vastness of the Ural Mountains, with slopes and snow aplenty, one theory rose to prominence, often deemed the most logical explanation. An avalanche. Imagine a wall of snow suddenly crashing down upon you in the dead of night, the sheer force pressing down with unyielding might. It's a scenario many initially pointed to as the cause of the Dyatlov group's bizarre and tragic end. Evidence in favour? The tent, partially buried, with a cut from the inside, as if the group had scrambled to escape a sudden snowfall. Some of their injuries could also align with a crushing weight of snow. A violent avalanche could indeed inflict the kind of internal trauma observed on some members without leaving superficial marks. Yet, for every point in favour, a contradiction emerges. Experienced mountaineers would never pitch a tent in the path of a potential avalanche. The slope they camped on was gentle, not the usual steep incline where avalanches occur. Furthermore, the bodies were found scattered, not buried together, and some at quite a distance from the tent. Had an avalanche been the cause, would they not be clustered closely under the snow? And then there's the timeline. The group had set up camp many hours before their untimely deaths. Avalanches typically strike shortly after a disturbance, say, pitching a tent. But here, the timing doesn't add up. So, does the avalanche theory hold its ground, or does it melt away under the scrutiny? While it's one of the more rational explanations, it leaves many questions unanswered. Like riddles within riddles, the Dyatlov Pass incident challenges every theory presented, beckoning us to dig deeper. As the avalanche theory started to seem less plausible to some, whispers of a darker, more covert narrative began to emerge. The cold landscape to the Urals hides more than just its natural dangers. Rumours began to circulate of a secret Soviet military testing. A land as remote as the Dyatlov Pass would be an ideal location for clandestine operations. Could it be that these young trekkers accidentally became witnesses to something that they weren't supposed to see? Something the authorities desperately wanted to keep under wraps? Adding another layer to this intricate mystery were the accounts of glowing orange spheres in the night sky. Witnesses from other expeditions, even some indigenous Mansi people, reported these otherworldly illuminations around the time of the Dyatlov Pass incident. These weren't mere flickers of northern lights or the imagination running wild. These were consistent pulsating orbs, distinctly hovering, casting an enigmatic glow over the cold, white expanse. UFOs, extraterrestrial visitors, or merely another clandestine military operation. These sightings certainly fueled theories of an otherworldly connection. Perhaps these trekkers bore witness to not just the might of nature, but the vast unknown of the universe. The military testing theory, draped with these eerie sightings, thickened the plot. Was it just nature's fury that befell the group? Or were there strings being pulled from beyond the stars or behind closed military doors? Our story does not dwell solely in the realm of the military or the extraterrestrial. At the foot of the Ural Mountains, where time seems to stand still, 
we find the indigenous Manzi people, guardians of age-old secrets. Soon after the incident, whispers began to circulate. Were the Mansi protectors of these sacred lands involved? Some believe that the group might have trespassed on a ritualistic site or hunting grounds, invoking the wrath of the tribe. However, it wasn't long before this theory started to crumble. The Mansi had coexisted peacefully within Russian settlers and explorers for years. And besides, the nature of the hiker's injuries didn't align with any tribal weaponry or attack methods. As quickly as it had arisen, this theory began to wane, submerged under its own lack of weight. But in the shadows of the tangible, in the grey realm between the living and the dead, another theory began to take shape. The Dyatlov Pass, with its chilling history, became the centerpiece for spectral speculations. Some say the mountain holds memories, not just of the ill-fated hikers, but of souls from time immemorial. Were the trekkers haunted by spirits of the past, victims of an age-old cruise? The line between reality and myth Fact and folklore is often a blurred one. In the biting coals of the Ural Mountains, where echoes of the past intertwine with the present, one can't help but wonder, are some mysteries destined to remain unsolved, forever shrouded in the mist of the supernatural? For decades, the Dyatlov Pass incident remained cloaked in darkness and conspiracy. But as with many mysteries, Time has a way of bringing clarity. The year is 2021, and modern science beckons with a potential answer. Researchers, using advanced simulation techniques, took inspiration from an unexpected source. Disney's animated film Frozen. Yes, you heard that right. These researchers believe that the same snow animation principles could be applied to understand the dynamics of the Dyatlov event. By reconstructing the conditions and topology of the pass, the study presented a chilling possibility. A delayed, slab avalanche might have sealed the group's fate. This wasn't your typical avalanche, but a slow-moving mass of snow which could explain the peculiar injuries, the urgency of the cut tent, and the subsequent frantic descent. While this theory offers some solace, a semblance of closure, it's not without its critics. Many argue that certain elements still don't align, that some shadows still lurk in the corners. So, has the riddle of the Dyatlov Pass truly been unravelled? Or are we, even in our age of unparalleled technological prowess, still grappling with questions that refuse to be confined by logic? Perhaps some mysteries, no matter how deep we dig, remain just beyond our grasp, inviting us to forever wonder and wonder in their enigma. The Dyatlov Pass incident, a name now synonymous with profound mystery and chilling speculation. Over the course of our journey, we ventured through the grim timeline, the eerie discoveries, and the plethora of theories that seek to explain the unexplainable. Was it the deadly embrace of an unexpected avalanche, a nefarious military test gone awry, or perhaps something more otherworldly. For every answer we think we find, countless questions arise, reminding us of the fragility of our understanding. The vast wilderness of the Urals, its ethereal beauty juxtaposed with its haunting history, stands testament to the fact that there are stories, forces, events, far beyond our comprehension. Events that blur the lines between reality myth, and the vast spectrum in between. This story was written and narrated by me, James Deverell.
Thank you for watching this video. Again, if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to hit the like button. And if you don't already, subscribe to my channel. I have just launched the podcast version of this YouTube channel on all major podcast platforms. So don't forget to head over to Spotify or Apple Podcasts and subscribe. Right now, the content down there is ad free, so you can take advantage of that. Don't forget to check out the content I'm releasing on other platforms such as Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And finally, if you or anyone else you know has a story about anything related to high strangeness, please reach out to me with a brief description to stories at daredevil.com. Thanks again for watching.